so students in lecture number 7 we have discussed what are different types of slabs one way slab two way slab and flat slab and how flat slab is different from one way as well as two way slab what are the requirement where we have to design flat slab where we have to construct a flat slab and some codal recommendation codal guidelines in brief we have discussed and we have gone through some of the definitions which will be helpful and we have to go through the design then we need all these definitions so we have discussed panel then various types of strips which we need to take into consideration while calculating bending moment as well as other requirements so today we will start with lecture number eight first of all we will be going through the exact diagram which we have to be draw when we have to design the flat slab now if you see here in this particular diagram this is a diagram a section of a or you can say a portion of a continuous flat slab where this flat slab is supported on various number of columns so in this figure in this portion of the flat slab that means some portion of the flat slab we are discussing here and these rectangular square now these rectangular squares which are shown here nine number of squares are shown so these are nine num number of columns and on these column these if you uh, just go through the rectangle outside the rectangle so then this is a portion of the flat slab now this one is panel which we have discussed in the previous lecture number seven that definition of panel we have discussed in the guideline of IS 456 so IS 456 says that center to center of columns then it will be creating a panel so this will be a panel so we will be going through different type of panels so exactly if we discuss then column number one column number two if I say this is column number one this is column number two then column number three and column number four exactly if I draw a rectangle here then it will be called as a slab panel now since we are going through the design of a continuous type of flat slab so we have taken these two type of two panels into consideration so exactly this much area we are going to consider so that we can able to understand basically what is a panel and column step and middle step now this green color area is shown this this is a strip the strip may have any length depending upon the design of the flat slab so now here this is a column strip and in IS 456 it is defined that how to get the column strip that means what will be the width of the column strip so it is mentioned in the IS code that width of the column strip should have a length of 0.25 L2 but it should be less than or it should not be more than 0.25 L1 now this is span length that is panel span length this is l1 and this one is l2 so from the given information given data we can first of all draw the lines for which can indicate that this is a column strip so column strip basically it is a strip in which columns are located so if you see here column number one column number two column number three so it will become a column strip and width it is shown 
that from center of column on each side on left hand well as right side so this whole will be the column strip width now as per the definition of the is456 regarding the middle strip so is code is saying that middle strip is surrounded by the column strip now here this is column strip and again in this side there will be column strip so you can say this is the middle strip this is another middle strip and depending upon the size we will decide that how to design a flat slab here we will be when we will go through the design problem then we will be designing middle strip as well as a column strip and these middle strip as well as column strip we have to take along both the directions that mean along l1 as well as l2 now design methodology we have to go through the all the details of the design methodology for flat slab as per is456 recommendations now step number 1 that is proportioning of the flat slab now here proportioning of flat slab we have to be very much clear about all the concepts proportioning of flat slab mean first of all we have to decide the thickness of the slab then if there is any drop then the dimensions and all the details of the drop panel and if there is column head then we will be discussing the column head so for this you can refer clause number 31.2 of IS456 regarding the proportioning of the flat slab how to decide the dimensions the very first point is thickness of slab that means let us discuss the guideline of IS456 how to decide the thickness of the slab for the design purpose refer clause number 31.2 2.1 of IS456. Now let us see what IS456 is guiding about the thickness of the slab. Now here you can see a figure. <coughs> this is the cross section of a flat slab. This is a flat slab which is supported by columns. So first of all we have to get the thickness of this slab. So there are few points which we have to keep in mind and all the detail is given in IS456 for the clarification purpose and understanding purpose we are going through all the details. So very first step is for fat slabs with drops. Now whether drops are here or not. Now in this figure this one is column, this one is column head and this one is third one is drop and this is slab so if there are flat slab which you are going to design and which is having drops then it's very simple the span to effective depth now effective depth you can see here thickness of the slab so span to effective depth ratio which is already given in the earlier sections we have discussed that is given in clause number 23.2 it can be applied directly now we have to go through minutely through the codal guidelines that mean what is written in clause number 23.2 regarding the so it is applicable for flat slab with drops so that formula you can directly apply here and you can just find out the depth or thickness required that mean thickness of the flat slab how much thickness is required the maximum value of larger span to effective, effective ratio will be. Now keep in mind here, you have to take into consideration larger span, not shorter span. So whatever be the larger span length that you have to consider and then taking the larger span to effective depth ratio. If you are using mild steel, then you can take the value that means L by D 40. But code is saying that means this ratio 40 can be reduced up to 80%. That means if you multiply 40 by 0.8, then it will give the value 32. And if you have a higher grade of steel, 
then this ratio can be modified accordingly. Second point is for flat slab without drops. Now first one was with drops, drop you already understood and if you are designing a flat slab without drop then this ratio should be multiplied by 0.9 and for this purpose again longer span is considered and third point is the minimum thickness of flat slab without drop should be 125 millimeter so these are the three guidelines which are suggested by quad is456 regarding the selection of the thickness of the slab now second point is or second component is drop here you have to refer clause number 31.2.2 of IS456 for drop guidelines. So very first point is drop panel will be provided by thickening of the slab surrounded by the column. That means wherever you have column is provided and slab is supported on the column, then the area surrounding the column that is area surrounding the column of the slab you have to increase the thickness of that slab and that will be considered as a panel a drop panel now here you can see this figure now this one is column and this one uh, now let us try to understand effectively now this is slab a slab has some thickness now here we have taken some area and we have increased the thickness of the slab now if you see here thickness 150 here maybe thickness 200 250 etc now it will be the column so above column area has been increased so that's why we are saying that this it will become panel so this is drop panel column drop panel and slab second point is the drop when provided shall be rectangular in plan so it should be rectangular in plan having a length in each direction not less than one third of the panel in that direction so later on when we will be going for the design problem you will be able to understand all the details that how to decide the thickness of the panel or thickness of the drop panel as well as other dimensions of the drop panel now here you have to note down clearly if we are not providing this drop panel then possibility is this column can punch into the slab but here when you have increased the area automatically the load will be distributed throughout the this dimensions of the panel so that means we are Go, uh, we are reducing the shear effect that means shear carrying capacity is increased with the help of the drops the third point is for exterior panel now you are well aware in continuous lab we, uh, continuous beam we have discussed that means there are some panel are interior panel some are exterior panel so if there is exterior panel the width of drop at right angle to the non-continuous edge and measured from the center line of column shall be equal to one half of the width of drop for interior panel so to understand it effectively you have to go through the design problem so at least first of all we are able to understand what is the meaning of drop and what is the requirement of drop panel now third is column head for this you have to refer clause number 31.2.3 where column head are provided that portion of column head which lies within the largest right circular cone or pyramid entirely within the outline of the column and column head shall be considered for design purpose as shown in so you can refer figure number 12a and 12c of is 456 to understand this guideline 
what code is suggesting about the column head. So here we are not going into so much detail. In the later section, when we will be going to the design, we will understand each detail of the column head effectively.